Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another art lesson. Today we're going to talk about a traditional style of art that goes back hundreds of years from Japan called woodblock printing. We'll take a look at one of the most famous woodblock printers, and we'll also see how it's making a comeback with modern day craftspeople. So let's take a look. Take a look at Japanese ukiyo-e art, and you'll see why the Japanese are so well known for their skilled workmanship and technical expertise. The term ukiyo means floating world, an idea which reflected the hedonistic and carefree lifestyles of Japan's rising middle class. Woodblock prints had been created in Japanese culture as early as the 8th century BC. Back then they were used mainly to reproduce Buddhist seals and images, and eventually scriptural text. By the early 17th century, the artist Sotatsu began using woodblocks to print elaborate artistic designs on paper and silk. At the beginning of the 17th century, when woodblock printing had just begun, Japan had reached a turning point. After years of war and economic struggles, the nation finally achieved peace and prosperity under the rule of the Tokugawa family. Japan's increasing wealth allowed for a mass production, purchase, and transportation of goods which had never been possible before. Among the mass production of goods, ukiyo-e prints became popular between 1615 and 1858. They were especially popular among merchants, the lowest class of Japan's Confucian social hierarchy at the time. The merchants actually benefited the most financially during the Edo period. As the merchant class grew wealthier, ukiyo-e art became a popular symbol of wealth. Many families decorated their homes with prints featuring beautiful geishas, kabuki actors, historical events, and the natural world. Ukiyo-e art was a cooperative effort carried out by a team of four or more. Prints involved the work of an artist, who would create the design on paper. A carver, who typically used cherry wood or the inner bark of a mulberry tree to carve the design. A printer, who was responsible for coloring, and a publisher usually a bookseller, who chose the theme of the print and doubled as the advertising guy and the manager of the rest of the team. Even after artists like Hishikawa Moronobu started using woodblock prints to make things easier for themselves to mass produce, many artists still only used them to create black and white designs, which they then would fill in with color by hand. It was only in 1765 that Japanese artists discovered the technique of using woodblock prints to print designs with multiple colors. Colorful brocade prints were popularized by Horunobu and ensured that color became integral to ukiyo-e artists. Another popular print artist, Toshusai Sharaku, is known for prints of kabuki actors, which depicted both the actors' personalities and the drama of kabuki theater. Sharaku's art did not idealize the famous kabuki actors it featured, but aimed to capture the actors' true personalities. Sharaku emphasized actors' expressions, prominent features, and personality traits. When the Japanese public became wealthy enough to vacation out of the country, themes of ukiyo-e art increasingly depicted landscapes and travel scenes. Towards the end of the Edo era, landscape prints by artists Hiroshige and Hokusai gained popularity. Hokusai called himself the Mad Painter, but his audience clearly had no problems with his self-proclaimed mental state because of his work. The Great Wave of Tanagawa is one of the most admired artistic pieces of this era. The Great Wave depicts a monumental wave about to crash down on three small boats filled with fishermen, suggesting the natural world's great power in human life. During an economic downturn, Hokusai printed cheap booklets of exemplary art and artistic techniques, which he marketed to students. He called the booklets manga, a name which is still used for low-cost books of graphic art. Hokusai's print series, 36 Views of Mount Fuji, which included the famous Great Wave print, arrived in Europe in the 1860s and influenced European Impressionists heavily. Artists like Degas, Monet, Manet, and Toulouse-Lautrec much admired ukiyo-e art, and were especially intrigued by artist Utamaro's portrayal of everyday scenes and emphasis on light. Post-impressionist Vincent van Gogh was an avid collector of ukiyo-e prints. Later Japanese prints, which focused on landscapes and natural themes, ushered in another interesting phenomenon, the inclusion of poetry with visual art. 
Many ukiyo-e prints and paintings also carry a short 17-syllable poem called haiku. Haiku was a major Japanese poetic style, which dealt with predominantly natural themes. This fit in perfectly with the later ukiyo-e style, and print artists would incorporate haikus in their prints quite frequently. Japanese ukiyo-e prints are a beautiful legacy. Although ukiyo-e art production waned after the Meiji Restoration, its impact continues to this day. People continue to cherish and collect Japanese prints as Van Gogh did in the 19th century, and their artistic influence has enriched European art and present-day manga and anime. The Japanese artist Hokusai was born over 200 years ago. He began illustrating when he was very young and painted more than 30,000 paintings during his life. Hokusai lived his 89 years as an illustrator in Japan. But work was scarce, and Hokusai had to move from town to town to find enough work to live. During his lifetime, he called himself by more than 30 different names. The last name he gave himself was an old man crazy for art. Hokusai was well known for sketching and painting ordinary daily scenes from his life, and for making woodblock prints, which he later painted with watercolors or inks. He designed and illustrated lovely small greeting cards called surimono. Surimono were intended to be given as gifts from one friend or family member to another, especially as a greeting for a happy new year or other holiday wish. A poet would write the special verse or saying on the paper, and an illustrator like Hokusai would interpret the poem through drawings. So recently, Japanese woodblock printmaking is making a real comeback, and I found a really cool YouTube channel by a modern woodblock artist named David Bull, who works out of Tokyo. And he has a really neat YouTube channel called David Bull, that's the name of his channel, that you could check out that has tons of really neat videos that show the whole process of how he makes woodblock prints from the original making of the artwork to the carving of the woodblocks to the printing and how he distributes them all around the world. So if you want to check out that, I really recommend that you take a look at that YouTube channel. Again, it's called David Bull is the name of the channel. So here we get to see his whole process for how he makes a woodblock print in the traditional style, the same as all of the artists from hundreds of years ago did. And he really has a great respect for the whole process and keeping it traditional, not using any like modern methods of doing it. So let's take a look at how he makes his prints. So the first thing that he'll do is they'll have the piece of artwork made on paper. And then he'll take this paper and he'll glue it to a board that he will then carve the design in. The first board that he carves is a black and white outline of the artwork. Then he'll make color blocks, which are every different color that goes into the artwork has its own block. So for example, Everything that's red on the finished work has its own block. Or any, anything that's green has its own block. And you'll combine all these blocks together to add the color to the original black and white outline. Here you see him adding ink to a ink color block. And he'll take a piece of paper and he'll carefully line it up so that everything is perfectly aligned. And he'll make an impression. He'll rub down on the piece of paper and the ink that's on the ink block will make an impression into the paper, and one by one, the colors will be added to make up what's already on the paper, the black and white outline. He'll add the ink in the various colors by taking a small dipping brush, putting it onto the wood, and then taking a wider brush, and using the wider brush, he spreads out the ink onto the impressions of the wood that are gonna be pressed onto the paper. And these are some of his finished designs, and as you can see, they look like traditional Japanese artwork, but it actually does a lot of kind of modern subject matter. A lot of these are based on popular video games. Maybe if you want to take a look and see if you can recognize some of the characters from video games in his artwork.
All right, let's take a look at a project that we can do at home that's inspired by the Surimono that we just learned about. For today's home project, we'll be making a Surimono illustration. If you remember, Surimono are the greeting cards that you give to people as gifts that often contain the poetry or verses on them. So first of all, think about who would you like to give the Surimono to? Father's Day is coming up in a few weeks. Or maybe you know someone who just might need some encouragement or some love and decide who you want to make this card for. Think about what you want to say in the greeting. Maybe you have seen some other cards before and have some nice sayings. Maybe you look up some verses in the Bible. Or maybe you will think of something completely by yourself that you can tell this person that you're giving this card to how much you mean to them and words of encouragement you may have for them. The supplies you'll need for this project are some cardstock or heavy paper or watercolor paper, some thin drawing pens, some markers, colored pencils, or watercolor paints, any of those three to color your illustration with. And then optionally, you can use some rubber stamps and stamp pads if you would like to add those to your design. I'll start by taking a piece of heavy paper. It can be either cardstock paper or just a thick stock paper or some kind of a watercolor paper. And this is going to be your card paper. And first of all, you're going to decide if you want to fold it and how you want to fold it. So I think I'll fold it in half like this. All right, now my card is folded. Now I need to decide what kind of images I want to design on this card. What do I want to say on the card and how do I want to arrange them together to make a complete design? So let's start out by doing that. Okay, I've drawn my design, my little saying at the top. I've drawn a little cartoon guy five here. And then up at the top, I have a uh, little saying, thank you for the joy you bring. To me, it means everything. And now I'm gonna add some color and some extra features to the car design. Okay, so you can add color to whatever color drawing materials you have. And you wanna keep it pretty simple. You know, Ceremono are not overly complicated designs. They're not overloaded with detail. They're just basically a simple image and the text of whatever you're saying on it. And then you want to open it up on the inside. You do more images, more text. I think I'm going to take out my stamp collection here. I have a, a bunch of stamps from when I was a kid, and I'm going to make some designs on the inside with some stamps. Yeah, I think I'll go with a ladybug stamp on a card. And a little tiny ladybug too. Okay, now I'll add a little uh, inside text and inside message and then I'll sign the card and then it should be done. Okay, so here it is with the inside text complete and I've signed my name and I'm ready to send it off to someone I think could appreciate it. Thanks for joining me for another Art Lesson today, guys. So until next time, happy art making and have a great day and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Right, the first thing you wanna make sure is that your workspace is completely clear of cats who like to play with your tools and your art supplies. All right, time to go, time to go, time to go.